Hi, everyone. Welcome to MGMT 4103 Business Decision Analysis or MGMT 5103 Business Analytics Techniques. Uh, I say that and I'll address it right up front. We have um, a, uh, a graduate and undergraduate version of this class, which are going to be held on the same course on Blackboard uh, due to uh, the amount of students enrolled and a few of the discussion. Uh, assignments that are going to take place. I've got the classes merged on Blackboard. So if you're uh, an undergrad, you're in, you are in 4103 Business Decision Analysis. Um, if you're a graduate student or if you're in our ADP program where you are um, a undergrad currently but taking some graduate level classes right now, your course is 5103 Business Analytics Techniques. Uh, the classes are similar the exception being that there will be additional problems or replacement problems for our graduate level students to take place. Your exams will be different. Um, and uh, they'll, you know, some of the assignments will be different. You'll be given separate instructions. So on Blackboard, if you notice the problem set instructions, um, make sure you note that uh, the instructions will either say 50, uh, 5103 or 4103 in the instruction file name. And I'll, I'll try to be very explicit on that to hopefully avoid any kind of confusion uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of signs as you open that up. All right, so without further ado, let's get started on your syllabus. Now note there are um, a, a few different sections of the 4103 class merged together. Um, so this CRN number might not be your CRN number. I, I'm gonna upload every version of the, of the uh, CRN number to a different syllabus just for your records. Um, so don't pay too much attention to that one right now. Um, so let's get started with an introduction for myself. My name is Brian Vickers. I've been an instructor here at NSU for a little over two years now. Um, uh, prior to that, I uh, graduated here with my undergrad and uh, master's in business analytics. I'm currently studying uh, business intelligence, so working on my uh, doctorate of business administration uh, in business intelligence at a university in California, hopefully We'll finish uh, next year. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Um, prior to uh, teaching here, I um, I tutored during my time as a graduate student and as an undergraduate student. So um, I have a lot of insight, I think, into how students um, learn and how when and where the struggles appear in this type of course, whether it's an operations management or quantitative methods or this class here. Um, there seems to be some parts of Excel or other type of um, you know, mathematical problems that cause anxiety or other issues. So um, from my time tutoring, I think I've got a pretty good handle on um, how to address that uh, by giving you a number of different ways to think about the problem and to work through the problem um, to give you options just to, um, to help. And also I try to make myself very available for questions. Uh, you can email me uh, 24 hours a day. I've got my phone on do not disturb when I'm asleep. So don't worry about it. If you're a night owl and you're working on problems at 3 a.m., you can send an email. Um, it won't bother me because I will be asleep and I won't see it. But when I do see it in the morning, I try to respond as quickly as possible. I know the standard is 48 hours to reply, but I, I try to be pretty quick with uh, getting back to you um, on that. The exception being Sunday evenings, I'm, I'm less likely to be available um, and coincidentally, most of your assignments are available or are due on Sunday nights. So please uh, don't wait until the last minute to get started. It'll be, it'll be less likely that I'm able to help you. I, I want to be able to help you with these problems. So uh, email is the best way to get a hold of me. I am not likely to be in my office. That's my office number. If you leave a voicemail, it does send a voicemail to my email where I can hear it. Um, but it takes a while for the email to come through. So you're better off just sending me an email to start. Um, I do have an office in Tahlequah and Broken Arrow campus, so if we ever needed to meet in person, we're, we're, uh, we're welcome to set something like that up. Uh, my typical office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Email me to set an appointment. Um, I can make times outside of that, but it'll just, be, it'll just uh, depend on what my schedule is like that week. Um, this is an asynchronous class. Uh, you would have had to take business statistics in order to qualify for this class as a prerequisite. Um, some of you may have taken it more recently than others. Um, we're not going to be doing really any kind of refresher on that. So there are some things you'll need to know um, from that. So if you have your, your, your homework, uh, you know, might help you out a little bit. Um, but I, uh, we will go over all, all the calculations, all the formulas on, you know, how to, how to calculate standard deviation or um, do um, regression or any of those things you might have touched on in statistics. Um, so 
not really a refresher, but um, uh, it, it, I think it'll come back to you when we get when we get started. So this class, we're going to work on uh, eight chapters from your book. We're not working on every chapter. Um, chapters one, two, three, four will be uh, in the first half of the semester, and then we'll have an exam over those four. And then seven, nine, 10, 11 will be the second half of the semester. We'll have an exam over those four chapters. Um, we're going to be primarily doing our problems in uh, Excel um, uh, through the use of problem set, where you'll compile a number of different problems on their own tabs in an Excel worksheet or, or multiple problems on one tab, potentially, depending on how um, how the problem is best, best laid out. And I will be, be providing for you a template. So you'll download a template file and work directly on that for all these problem sets. You're not going to be creating it on your own. Um, that way you have a good idea on, on how um, the flow of uh, inputs to outputs should go. Um, it'll match the practice problem videos that I've got uh, recorded for you to view. Um, I'm gonna, I work through several of the practice problems, and then you, you can watch that and follow along as you're working on your actual problems. They'll be similar. They won't be identical, um, but they'll be pretty similar. Textbook is um, Essentials of Business Analytics, second edition. I think they're on the fifth edition of this book. I haven't seen any reason to upgrade, and this one is still widely available for a lot cheaper. So uh, I don't want you to spend money, extra money, if you don't have to. So I'm still working off the second edition of this book. Uh, there will come a time in the future, probably not too far from now, where I'll have to start using the most recent version because the um, bookstore can't get a hold of any more copies of the second edition, but there seem to be plentiful. Um, so you can use an ebook, you can use the uh, PDF. The two exams are going to be on lockdown browser, um, but if you're using a, a, an ebook version of it, what um, what I've done is I've got a PDF of the entire textbook uploaded. You'll be able to click a link on Lockdown Browser. It'll pull up a tab. I've got it set where it'll actually open up a tab in Lockdown Browser for you to look at the book. So um, it might be preferable to get a physical textbook if you haven't gotten yours yet, just because of the exam thing, if you don't want to work off of a, of a PDF to find your information about the textbook. But ideally, you're not you know, just flipping through a textbook, looking up answers. You, you've actually studied ahead of time um, to avoid that altogether. Anyway, right. Uh, you're allowed to use all your notes on your exams, um, paper notes. I don't allow any electronic devices during the exams, um, but uh, the textbook will be available to you. Your notes, they can be printed out, paper, they can be handwritten notes. Um, you will need to use your, your camera for that. Um, Excel 365, or at least a fairly recent version of Excel is required. Fortunately, it's available for free just by being an NSU student. The instructions are here in the syllabus. You can also go through um, the Go NSU site through the IT client portal on the bottom left, um, and it'll give you the instructions there. Um, you just have to uh, use your NSU login account through, through um, uh, you know, your, your Gmail account, basically. Uh, to, to log in um, with your username, same username and password you use to log in to go into CU, Blackboard, et cetera. Um, you'll use that to install 365. Um, uh, if you have a Chromebook, it's not going to work for this class. Uh, Google Sheets will not be an acceptable alternative. It does not have all the functions and formulas you need. We're going to be using some macros uh, during a, a couple of the chapters. It won't work on Google Sheets. You won't be able to complete it. Um, uh, so a Chromebook is not going to be, uh, it's not going to work for you uh, on this class. I know that they're pretty handy for a lot of stuff for school, but this is one of the areas where they, uh, they, they don't keep up because you can't get Excel on them. You can get a web version of Excel, but again, it, it's not going to work. Um, so for that reason, if you have um, uh, a home computer, you can install this on, great, um, maybe a work computer, but Additionally, you can just go to any of the NSU campuses. The computer labs are available 24-7. Um, you can swipe with your student ID to get in after hours um, and use the computers there. Um, I recommend if you live close enough to one of the campuses anyway, just to avoid any kind of internet issues. When you're taking your exams, at the very least, I would do them on, I, I mean, I, as a student, I did almost all my exams on the computer lab just to have the surety of the internet uh, service working. And, uh, you know, if anything, Internet wise goes out. There's a pretty good record of that because uh, you know the IT team has a record of that, and there's cameras in the uh, computer lab rooms. So um, just for you know uh, uh, maximum protection for myself, I always took them in the lab. You don't have to, by all means. This is an online class. You're not required to by any means, but it's there, uh, available to you. Hopefully, you live close enough to one of the campuses um, that you can do that uh, as an alternative. 
Um, you can use a calculator, but it has to be a physical calculator. Uh, you can't use your phone app calculator for the exams. Um, but uh, I also I enable it on on lockdown. So there'll be a there'll be a calculator app right there on the screen. You can just click the calculator button if you forget your calculator or you don't have a physical one. All right, let's take a look at the assignments. Um, there's going to be a discussion activity this first week. Uh, there's going to be a chapter quiz matching each of the chapters. Those are worth 25 points apiece, adding up to 200, which is 20% of your grade. Um, the six problem sets, uh, the first one's a little lighter, so it's only worth 55 points, and then they're worth 85 after that. All of that totals to 480. Uh, and then your two exams are, are, are weighted equally, 150 points for each of them, um, 300 total points. So if you look at the distribution there, um, the quizzes and the exams, 20%, 30%, half your grade is quizzes and exams, and roughly half your grade are the problem sets. So 480, 48% of your grade is on the six problem sets um, and the discussion activity to kick things off this first week. Um, so everything's based on a thousand point scale. Um, if there's, for whatever reason, I have to, maybe we have some sort of uh, natural disaster, snow, Mageddon, internet outage for a week or something. Maybe something happens where I've got to, um, you know, erase one of the problem sets from, or, you know, not, not run into one of the quizzes or whatever reason, uh, one of these is exempted or removed. Just know your grade is based on a percentage of total points earned versus total points possible. So if for whatever reason, maybe 25 points weren't possible because I canceled one of the quizzes, we well, your grades based out of 975 and not a thousand. So um, it does change a little bit. So ultimately, your assessment is going to be based on this percentage scale. You get to 90%, you get an A, 80%, B, 70%, C. Um, for most of you, you will need to see or higher because this will be a class in your major or being substituted for quant methods, which is in the business core. You'll need to see or higher uh, to actually earn credit in this class. I do won't earn it uh, from the majority of our degrees, unless this is for whatever reason. Uh, you're very ambitious and you're taking this as an elective. Uh, good for you if you are. I think maybe maybe it would count uh, if you got a D, but um, don't don't count on it. Uh, just shoot for an A, and then you know aim small, miss small. All right, you got um, Blackboard, Blackboard, Blackboard. Uh, all the assignments are going to be submitted via Blackboard. Even our discussion board post. You're going to actually record a video, a video discussion on a website called Flip.com. I'll provide a link to that. You're going to copy and paste a link to your video onto the Blackboard discussion board post. Um, there's going to be times where maybe you're going to have questions on the work that you're doing on your problem sets. You want to email me your Excel sheet for me to take a look at it and help figure out what's going on, uh, where you've gone wrong. Um, that's great, um, but that does not count as your submission for the assignment. You have to submit it on Blackboard or I can't submit a grade. Additionally, I give you plenty of notice on all your assignments. I don't accept late work, period. Um, that goes for all students. No, no work, late work is accepted. Um, additionally, this is a 16 week class and for whatever reason, uh, people sometimes like to plan vacations in the middle of the semester and ask, can you open up the exam early? No, uh, the exam window is going to be open from, from, for a four day period, a Monday through Thursday period. Um, that's when it's open. Uh, that's going to be listed right here. I've got the syllabus with all of your due dates. Um, I will be opening a few of the assignments early once we get started, not right away. Um, but once we get into the swing of things, um, I'll probably be opening up the, the later half of the semester things early so that you can work on it at your own pace, but with steady due dates. The due dates will not change. Those are, those are going to be um, set in stone um, uh, on here. Um, but I, I likely will open some stuff up you know, the week before we go to spring break. That way, for those of you who want to work on it early, you can. Um, not required, of course, uh, to work over spring break. In fact, I hope you don't. I hope you enjoy the time off, but um, it'll be there for those of you who, you know, aren't going on vacation, want to get a want to get a quick start or whatever. Um, but I'll go over that when I go over the schedule near the end of this video. Um, there'll be some times where you'll have to do a little bit of writing. Um, I want original thought. Um, I'd rather it be, you know, not the best uh, conclusion um then then be copied from somebody else's uh so much so that um if you plagiarize your work you're going to get a zero percent um so for any writing assignments don't plagiarize don't copy and paste from some homework helper on chegg or one of these other websites um i it, it's it's pretty easy to tell what that looks like I, this, this may be a shock to you but um using ai writing it's very obvious 
uh, when when it's not somebody's the way that somebody actually talks. Um, when you read enough of these papers, it becomes obvious instantly. Uh, and I am a hawk for plagiarism and cheating. Don't do it. Um, I'm just going to give you a zero on the assignment. You do it twice after you've been warned on the first time. I'm going to give you an F for the class. So it's um, uh, if you turn in all your work and you do all the work uh, as instructed, you're going to do well in this class. If you cheat, you're not going to do well in this class. Please don't do it. Um, if you're struggling with it, reach out to me. I will help you. I will get onto a Zoom call and help you understand what's not clicking and, and work on it uh, with you. So um, uh, just hopefully it doesn't resort to where you're, you're, you know, you, you attempt this and get caught because the, um, the, the results of that are, are not, not positive. So again, please don't do that. Uh, uh, to recap, you will need a webcam uh, with Res Respondus Lockdown Browser installed. I'm going to put a test uh, exam, like a like a one question, my browser is working thing for you to test to make sure your webcam is working, to make sure your um, response browser is installed properly in your computer, that it can handle it, your internet's working and all that. Um, that way, before you actually get started on the exam, you can know ahead of time and see if you need to make other arrangements. Uh, again, don't talk to anyone else <laughs> during the exam. Don't use, uh, you know, I've had students talk into Siri and ask questions to look up things. I, 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 I've had people have a laptop next to them in the screen. I'm going to give you a zero. Just don't do it. Uh, just prepare, please. I, uh, you know, I want you guys to pass this class. I really do. Uh, please don't cheat. Again, consequences for cheating, zero percent. And some of these assignments are worth a lot of points. Zero percent could be on one assignment could be a full letter grade. All right. Um, six problem sets. Uh, they're each going to cover problems from one chapter. Um, you're expected to work on it while you're working on the other chapter material, like studying for your quiz. Um, all of your problem sets, when you're doing these, you can't just type in the answers and get credit for that. I don't care about the answers. The answers are out there on answer keys everywhere. That doesn't matter to me. Um, what, what matters to me is that you're actually working through the problems and understand how to get from point A to, to point B. Um, so for that end, I'm going to be teaching you how to use input uh, cells and references to input cells and using Excel formulas and actually showing your work and solving the problem, not just typing in the problem. If you just type in all the answers to the problems, you're probably going to get 0% credit for that because, again, I don't really care about the answers. I care about how you arrive at the answers. Um, if you get incorrect answers, but you're showing your work, you're going to probably get partial credit up to and including a lot of the credit. Um, maybe there was one mistake along the way. I correct one formula and the rest of it comes out right because you have all the other input cells correctly. So you had one problem, one part of a several part formula incorrect. You're probably still gonna get a really good grade on that. Um, I, again, I'm not concerned about the final answer. I wanna make sure these concepts are making sense to you. Um, I think if nothing else from this class, you come out of it being able to perform well on Excel and making spreadsheets, um, at, at, uh, and making dashboards for business use, um, you're going to get a lot of use out of that in business. You, you'll you'll look like an Excel wizard, and you'll you know you'll go you'll go far just based on that. So again, I want you to, to be using critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, and solving these problems, understanding them, um, not just typing in the answers. Uh, I, that's not what I'm looking for in these problem sets. So I want to make sure that's abundantly clear. Um, that, you know, everything's going to have inputs and you're going to say equals this times this, and you're going to click on this cell times this cell, and then the answer is going to come up. Um, if you do that on, on a piece of paper and I don't see any of that stuff, and you just type in the answer, I, I don't care about the answer, really. So again, um, I just want to make sure that's abundantly clear uh, on that. Um, for the parts that are require written explanation, um, spelling and grammar errors, um, Unprofessional writing, I mean, you're not speaking in full sentences, um, you're not writing as a business case, you're using slang, whatever. Um, you're not going to get full credit for that. It needs to be written in a way as if you were um, answering the question for your boss, right? You're turning in a report, you work through a problem for a business case. This is a business class. Um, it's in the business core. It's called business decision analysis or business analytics techniques. So business level writing is what's expected. Now, the good news, all right, that might have sounded dire, but the good news is I provide for you a um, check my work quiz. If you've ever used uh, like Connect or one of the other online uh, textbooks where you can check your work as you're working the problems, I provide that for you. You're going to get three attempts. Um, I'm going to ask you like five to ten questions about the problem sets. 
Um, I might say, what do you have in, in cell C11 or what do you have in this? And it'll help to see, are you on the right track? You'll be able to see how many of those you got right. They're not worth any points, but they will, they're worth doing because you have that kind of peace of mind that you did solve the problem um, correctly. Um, now it's not going to be every single step of the problem on there. I, I want them to go you know, quickly for you when you do them, but um, they will indicate a likelihood, not a guarantee that your problem set responses are correct. You would not likely have arrived at this answer unless you've done so many you know, precursor parts correctly. And there'll be three attempts for each of the problem sets. So you can try it once, work on it again, try it again, work on it again, try it another time, work on it again. Um, and if you still have questions, you can email me um, after that. But that should be your first line. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Check your work. It's there. It's free. Um, uh, more good news. Uh, I will provide for you a, a section of the discussion board where you can look for a partner. Um, I let you work on these with a partner. I think collaborating with other people is a good thing in business. Um, it's good for you because it helps, you know, if, if you're good at one thing and they're good at another thing, you combine your forces and, um, you know, uh, uh, you're able to get it done. Um, it's a good thing for you because uh, it's less grading for me, which means you'll get your answers, uh, your, your grades back faster. Um, so it's a win-win all around. Um, so uh, if you do that, you just need to make sure your file name has both your names on it. And then in the little text box, when you submit that file on Blackboard to say, you know, if your last name is, you know, it, 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 so I'm Brian Vickers, there's John Smith, and I'll say, uh, completed uh, as a group with John Smith, right? Just, just some kind of note so I know to be looking for that and then put both your names in the file name. I'll give you exact instructions, but this will be an example. Uh, MGMT 4103, problem set one, Smith and Jones might be an example of file set. So you can work on it with a partner. Um, for those of you in the 5103 class, you need to make sure you're working on it with other students in 5103. If you're in the 4103 class, you're working on students with 4103 as the problem set will differ based on um, what grade level you're taking it on. Um, if I see a bunch of different students and the file name has everyone's name on it, uh, there might be a problem or I rescind the right to work with a partner. Um, you're allowed to work with one partner, one partner only, not to share your files with several different students. Um, so, um, doing so, working with several different students, the three, four of you turning in the same file, I would start marking that down as cheating because you're working outside of the bounds of what is allowed, um, or I may just rescind the right to um, complete partner sets with a, par with a uh, problem set with the partner going forward. Um, so, you know, don't make it an issue. I think it's good for you if you find a partner and you're working on it together, meet, you know, weekly over Zoom a couple of times to work on them. Um, you'll both, sit, you'll both, you know, work on one file or you can work on separate files and, and merge them, but you'll submit uh, uh, one copy of the file for each of you. You'll each, you'll each go on a Blackboard and submit a copy of that file. Um, all right, uh, let's go down to the assignment due date. So this first week, uh, we're going to be doing a discussion board uh, video and then uh, your syllabus acknowledgement. So there's just a single question, syllabus acknowledgement. In order for you to be counted as present in an online only class, you need to have some sort of course interaction. Logging on a Blackboard alone does not count as course interaction. So please make sure that you um, um, do this discussion video assignment by Sunday night. Syllabus acknowledgement as well. Uh, once those are done, I turn you in as having attended class this first week. If I turn you in as absent, that could affect your financial aid. Uh, so please uh, make sure you do that. Um, if you don't do either of those, you'll be turned in as absent. If you don't do a discussion video, you've missed out on 20 points. Um, so please do um, hopefully both, but at the very least one or the other. Um, <clears throat> after that, we get started on the chapters. Um, there are four chapters in each section. Three of them are gonna have a problem set attached to them. And then the other one will just have a chapter quiz alone. Um, this exam will take place the week before spring break. Um, this linear regression chapter, which is after spring break, I expect this to probably take you a little longer than um, uh, one week to work on it, uh, probably based on you know, the amount of, uh, of, of work on that chapter. So I'm actually gonna open this up the same time that we start the exam one, a week before spring break. So. You're going to have like three weeks to do it. It's just that spring break is going to be kind of sandwiched in the middle of that. So you, you'll get, it'll just give you maximum flexibility on when you want to um, get started on working on that. Uh, but if you notice most of these, um, after we get started, this is uh, a week from now, a week from now. And then 
I start giving you two weeks to get them done. So, so these are done. Um, there's a chapter quiz and a problem set. I want you to have two weeks to get all that done. Um, that don't wait to the last minute or the last weekend to get started on the problem sets. I promise they will take longer than you expect, which is why I give a, a, a two week uh, period for, for the majority of them. The first problem set, a little lighter, but you know most of them have eight, nine problems to get done, and they're time and they're multiple steps on each of them. So they they are they're weighty. So don't 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 wait too long on them. Um, exam one concludes the first section. Exam two, um, that'll be all you'll have to do the very last week of class is complete the exam number two, um, and then um, then we're done. Uh, let's take a quick look at Blackboard. So uh, the start here section has um, this welcome video, which you've clicked on already. Uh, information about me. Syllabus acknowledgement is going to be right here on uh, on this page. So this will be updated with the latest version of the syllabus. Learning modules. This is where all your modules are going to be. Um, module zero folder is this you know uh, orientation material overview for the semester, including this video um, due by Sunday night. Everything's due on Sunday night by 11.59 p.m., um, midnight or later, and it is late. Uh, so get it in on time, please. Um, your, um, the, the module start dates are all listed here. After we get back from spring break, the second section, I don't have the module start dates listed because I'm likely going to open them earlier. Um, we'll, we're just gonna see how things are going, make sure everybody's getting these done on time and it's not becoming uh, an issue or anything like that, and then uh, I'll let you know. Uh, but probably I'll just open up, I may open up all of them for you to work at your own pace after the after the spring break, but uh, we'll address that a little later in the semester. All right, well, that's all I've got. Uh, a little longer video than I was uh, planning, but I wanted to make sure everything's covered. Uh, again, any questions pop up, email me anytime. Looking forward to the class. Thanks, everyone.